Ezekiel chokes are everywhere. One of the highest percentage of Ezekiel chokes is from the position that we call the technical mount. Now the Ezekiel choke is named after a judoka, Ezekiel Paragusa, and uh, they, Ezekiel used that choke really successfully in grappling competition. The traditional way to do it is four fingers in your own sleeve. I want to show that I personally prefer two fingers in my own sleeve. It makes a little box with his neck around it. Nice slide. This just gives me a little bit more fluidity and a little bit more range of motion, particularly uh, for those of you that have shorter sleeves. And also, it's two less fingers in the break, so that's pretty cool. Before we get into the, the, uh, the techniques, I'm going to show you how to take technical mount, and then once we have technical mount, um, which is a very powerful attacking position, how to Ezekiel choke from there, I'm going to do two things. First of all, explain that in jiu-jitsu rules and common rule sets, I'm not allowed to put my fingers inside my opponent's ski like this. I have to roll my opponent's ski. The reason for that is safety. Uh, rules, of practice, uh, rules, referees and folks like that that are in charge of enforcing the rules don't want you to break your fingers in a competition. And so if I put my fingers in Jesse's key and he like rips it back, I'm not gonna know when he's gonna rip it back, I can hurt myself. So the idea being, I have the choice uh, to, to let go of my own grip. So I can put my fingers in my own key, I can't put my fingers in Jesse's key. So let's get started. Jesse's head here and feet here. The best way to get, or the, maybe not the best, but the, the most common way to get to technical mount. The reason we call this technical mount is that this is the traditional mount position, right? What makes it the mount position? It's that my hips are past his hips, my knees are on the mat, and you know I have a really straight on mount with him. But if Jesse gets on his side and looks at the camera, and make this transition, you notice that my hips are still past his hips, he still doesn't have a guard. It's not side control, and so it is a technical mount position. And so this is a really, this is one of my absolute favorite attacking positions, because here we have his collar, we have his arm, we can have back takes, all manner of stuff, even before we get to the Ezekiel. But I do want to show you the Ezekiel. So let's back up just a little. First of all, when my opponent gets on their side, it's usually they want to do a knee elbow escape and try to try to get out of the mat. Really smart decision. So I always want to be prepared to go to technical mat. What I'm going to do is whichever way he points his body, my heel is going to pull into that bottom hip and my knee is going to come as high as possible. I want it to be parallel with his heel. So if I'm doing this, just to do the elbow. See how my heel comes into his hip, and then I transition with my knee on his uh, up by his up by his head. I want my chest to be. I want to have good posture with my spine straight, but I also want my chest behind his shoulder blade so that if he does try to reset, that I can push back into it. You can't see, but I also have active toes back here, so I can press back into it. Once our opponent goes down the positional ladder, we want to lock him into that position. And this is a position where not only can I attack him from here very effectively, I can also take his back, which is another step up the positional ladder. So my knee is right parallel to where Jesse's top ear is. If my knee were a little bit further back, and Jesse tried to put his back on the mat, you saw how he was unable to do that before, now he's able to do that. Now this isn't the end of the world, right? The mount is a great position. But we want to lock it into a worse position, particularly if we want to lose Ezekiel. So one more time. So I'm, I'm in the mount, my buddy's gonna get on his side, my heel pulls into his hip, my knee walks up high, you can see back here that I have my active toes, my chest is behind his shoulder. So we'll go over all the different attack options, right? We have the Kimura grip for the arm bar here, the gift grab for the back take, and I can attack his collars for a great sliding collar choke, as well as many, many other choking techniques. But often they're not gonna expect you to go for your own sleeve, and your own sleeve is right there. So remember, two fingers, so the bottom hand, just goes into my sleeve. My other hand makes a karate chop. I'm just gonna try to brush down my gi. And that, um, and that is easy to get to the top. Let's rotate this one just so they can be sure to get another view. You can see, once again, that like, a lot of times, you, you can go straight for this, because a lot of times they're not expecting it. But we could also, you know, if I'm going for this and he doesn't want me to get it, right? He doesn't expect this. Or I'm going for the arm, he tries to defend his arm. There's all sorts of stuff we can do. Like I said, I prefer to, most people put four fingers in. They, it, they feel stronger. But from my perspective, the way that we're trying, what we're trying to do is we're trying to cut off space around their carotid arteries. And so I'd rather have mobility than strength here. So I put two fingers in, my hand comes here, and I'm just thinking about brushing the dirt off my shoulders. So you can see it's not a very pleasant choke. Without Jesse in there, that's where his neck is, that's where his neck is. And that's sort of the mechanic of the Ezekiel choke. The Ezekiel choke's really effective. You can find it from the back, 
You can find it from the mount. You can obviously find it from technical mount. It's one of the very few submissions that I have seen hit successfully from inside someone's closed guard as well. So um, lesson as always, always protect your neck and especially be aware of Ezekiel chokes because they'll get you.